Welcome to... Introverts Own Your Voice. I'm Tom Marku. I'm Johanna McLeod. And we will cover information that can really help you as an introvert express yourself, own your voice, become more successful, do better in any kind of situation, whether it's meeting someone for the first time in a networking event, or if you're on stage addressing a group of prospective clients, or in a meeting. Now, Joanna, I, I'm wondering about your experiences as an introvert. For example, I remember that you were part of Toastmasters and then you stopped being part of Toastmasters. I couldn't take being around all the people. Okay, because being around people took energy out of you? Oh, definitely. And this is something that we find with introverts. I often say with an audience, I say that if you're wondering if you're an introvert, if someone says party and you say, how long is it? When can I leave? You're an introvert. You see, it's all about energy. You know, we introverts are fantastic. We get a lot of things done because we like to think things through. We do so well that there should be a parade for us. Nobody would come. <laughs> well, yeah, I get your point. The idea is that we introverts, we have to be very selective. I used to get so angry at myself. Maybe you can relate to this. I used to get so angry at myself because I wouldn't show up to all the networking events. I wouldn't accept all the possible speeches that I could give, all those opportunities. Then I learned something with mentors and training. I learned that if you became really good at getting the most from the few events or speech opportunities or whatever, or even phone calls that you make to prospective clients, if you could be really good in those few opportunities, you could build success that way instead of being upset with yourself for not accepting too many of these things. And I think a lot of us do that. Yes. And the, the big challenge there, I'm glad you bring that up, Joanna, is that we accept too many things mm -hmm. for ourselves. I, I sometimes say with an audience, I'll say that an extrovert, it's like they have a giant pizza pie of energy. Mm -hmm. An introvert has a pecan pie. And just by example, a person with clinical depression symptoms, they've got a dinner mint of energy. So we got to be really strategic. Who has the Tic Tac? I'm going to ponder that one. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to share in this brief time together in our conversation is really practical stuff about what to do as an introvert, because we're already aware of that you have a certain amount of energy and that every time that you're in a group or you're on the telephone with someone or you're in a meeting, you are paying out energy. Can you relate to that, Joanna? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. All the time. Well, you know, before we did this conversation, I remember that you, you mentioned that one of the tough parts about giving a speech at Toastmasters is you felt that you were in a situation where people could be... Yeah, I really felt like I was going to be judged. Yeah, that's really heavy. That's, that's, that's a hard burden to, to deal with. So let's, let's talk about that. Okay. So today we're going to talk about how to deal with the concern an introvert can have about being judged. See, we pride ourselves as thinking things through. We pride ourselves at being accurate and very rational and very intelligent. The problem for an introvert is that often we're shoved into a situation, even if you're just talking with someone, you're shoved into a situation where you're not given the time to think it through. They expect you to keep the conversation going. You don't want one of those awkward silences or something like that. Oh, I've been in plenty of those. I hear you. And the challenge is, how can we keep the conversation going? Or if you're giving a speech or if you're in a meeting and someone hits you with a tough question, what do you do with that? One of the things that we can do as introverts is we can give ourselves some time to think. So if you're hit with a tough question, whether you're in a meeting or if you're on stage presenting to some prospective clients, what you can do is have these what I call recovery methods. These ways of being able to give yourself some what I call think space so you can think about it. For example, if you're in a meeting and someone said, well, well tell me what you think about that, George, and they're expecting you to boom, boom, just answer right away. Here is a technique. You can say, I can give you two things. I can give you my first impression, and then secondly, I can see how we talk for a little bit more, and I'll probably adjust my first impression about this topic. I see you nodding there, Joanna. How does that feel as a 
maybe a useful tool? Well, I know that if I can do that, then I'd be able to think about what I'm going to say next. So if I remember to say that and it's just kind of programmed into me, mm -hmm. then I'll have more time to think about what my answer will be. Exactly. Those words, by having these rehearsed over and over again until they become part of you, and that's what I do with my clients. It's words, strategy, rehearsal. Now, I always believe in customizing the words. We can work with that for a moment here about the words. The phrase that I use is, I can give you two things. I can give you my first impression. Now, while I'm saying those words, I can give you two things, I can give you my first impression, I have that memorized, and what can happen is that my mind can be thinking it through. So by the time I actually answer the question about my first impression, I will actually have the words ready. Have you ever been in a situation, Joanna, where, where you felt like you really wish that you had some way to like put the conversation on pause? Yeah, I've been in plenty of networking situations where the person talks to me and then they want feedback and mm -hmm. I just don't know what to do. Right, right. So another way we can deal with this is we can say, I need to pause for a moment. I want my response to be valuable to you. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, because you see what I love about sharing this idea is that we can always tell the person or the audience or the person on the telephone what we're going to do. We're not telling them what to do. We're just saying, I need to pause for a moment. I just want my response to be valuable to you. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not going to come back with, oh, yeah, talk right now. I don't want anything valuable to come out of your mouth. They're... I'd be very surprised if they did. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Only if they're trying to heckle you in, in, in terms of a conversation, if you're on the stage and they're in the audience. But what I'm talking about here is that if you have pre-planned what I call recovery methods, then you're able to handle that situation, which also then quiets down any feelings of nervousness because you know you're ready for these things. Oh, the jitters are definitely a part of me when I'm trying to give a presentation. Right. I'm with you. And let's go back to what you originally mentioned was the idea that it was kind of rough for you to go give a speech at Toastmasters because you felt that it was really a judgmental situation. Mm -hmm. Now, it's understandable because the Toastmasters group, although it's really... A lot of friendly people, I've been part of it, you've been part of it, things like that. A lot of good things happen yeah. in Toastmasters groups. But if you are giving a speech, you are going to get some form of evaluation. Yes. So because there's some, it might be friendly, you know. The challenge, though, is that you are being evaluated. So mm -hmm. that can feel like a, a judging situation. Well, it puts like a compound situation where I already feel like I'm going to be judged just by what I do per, mm -hmm. in a personal mm -hmm. sense, but then they're also critiquing me ah. too. So that brings another wave of, you know, jitters. Right. And I'm with you on that. And the, and the challenge that we're looking at here is it seems, and there's some research to back this up, it seems that human beings are a couple of things. One is automatically judging everything. And you could blame that on our ancestors because the ones who judged, hey, saber-toothed tiger, I'm getting away from that. They're the ones who lived. The ones that went, hello, kitty. Those folks didn't live and they weren't our <laughs> ancestors. So you see my point is, is that, so if we come from a line of judgers, mm -hmm. we come from a line of people, actually there's research on this that shows that people can take in negative stuff. Negativity sticks with us. It's amazing. If, if you have a good moment in life, mm -hmm. let's say like two weeks ago you had some ice cream. Mm -hmm. You may not remember that as well as touching a stove and burning your fingers on it 30 years ago. Oh, yes. Okay. And that we know, because we know ourselves, that everybody tends to judge a lot. So then the introvert needs to be able to have like a toolkit so that you have something to rely on. Would you say that a negative response is kind of like it's being very sticky and a positive response is very slippery? You can't grab a hold of it and keep it? Well, in terms of what the research was pointing out was that in order to... It's, it's what a metaphor you got going on there. The difference like between like... Just recently, I, I grabbed a, a jar of honey and it was like, oh my gosh, I can't get this thing off of my hand. And at the same time, I grabbed a soda pop bottle and it was, had condensation was on it mm -hmm. and it was like, whoop, out of the hand, Oof. thud. 
you know, and then you have to be really careful because if you open the thing, <laughs> all over the place. So, so the thing is, is that, so I get your point about the idea that positive slippery. moments are slippery for our brain, actually for our long-term memory. Mm -hmm. In order for a positive thing to stay in our long-term memory, this is good for introverts. We like to think things through. Well, actually you need 10 to 20 seconds of focusing on a positive memory to put it into your long-term memory. Hmm unlike negative thoughts. So here's an example. Joanna, if you have felt uncomfortable during, because what they do in Toastmasters is you give a speech and then somebody gives a va an evaluation. Yes. If you felt like uncomfortable receiving some kind of constructive feedback, but it sounded like it was critical, mm -hmm. it's very easy for your, your long-term memory to go, oh, well, I messed up there. Mm -hmm. You see? And that then makes it tougher to go into more speech situations because you got this feeling of being criticized that your long-term memory is holding on to. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us as introverts that any positive feedback that we get, that we actually read it again, look at it again. I, I have taught MBA students and I asked them, what has been working for you with this class so far? Mm -hmm. What would you like more of? And I, I get these pieces of paper because I work sometimes with international students and they feel more comfortable writing down their comments mm -hmm. anonymously mm -hmm. on a piece of paper. But I read these things more than once mm -hmm. because I need to take that 10 to 20 seconds of getting the positive feedback into my long-term memory. Mm -hmm. So we've covered, in summary, let me just bring this all together and maybe I'll have a, a question or two for you there, Joanna. In fact, of all the things that we've talked about so far, what would you think we'd, we'd like you would like to hold on to, and we would like to have our listeners hold on to, what, what do you think would be something to hold on to? Um, basically, I think the thing that really stuck with me in our conversation is the whole sticky and slippery thing. Oh, okay. Basically, when something good happens, to really make a conscious effort to focus on it mm -hmm. so that it goes into your long-term memory. Wow. You see, that was a total surprise. I know we had some kind of outline for this conversation, but the idea of talking about that we as introverts have got to hold on to. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got to uh, make sure that we remember the positive things about our times we've communicated. Mm -hmm. It's so easy for an introvert to be angry with the self and say, why didn't you just jump in there? Why didn't you add something to that meeting or something like that. I think we can be our worst critics. Absolutely. Absolutely. Particularly think things through. You know, there's a very short walk, maybe just a hop, from think things through to ruminating. Mm. Ruminating, you know, is rerunning the bad thoughts over and over again. Oh, how could I have done that? And that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So maybe one of the great things that come up with this conversation as we come to a close is the idea that really as introverts, we need to focus on the positive. We need 10 to 20 seconds of paying attention to it, maybe even repeating it to a loved one, to a trusted friend, so that we can just make it solid, uh -huh. saying that I did that right. I said, for example, in I was working with one of my clients, and one of my clients was pointing out that it's one of the things this person developed during some of our sessions is this ability to really get into the conversation during mm -hmm. a business meeting and to be able to say, oh, I'd like to add to that. If one does that as an introvert, gets into the conversation like that, then you can keep score of this. You can make note of it. I, every night before I go to sleep, I actually have a journal. I call the Daily Journal of Victories and Blessings. So before I go to sleep, I go to sleep happy because I write down the good stuff of the day. So if I was needing to develop this ability to do two things. One, to get into conversations at work and say, I'd like to add to that. That was a good idea. I want to add one more point to it. Mm -hmm. saying that. Number two, if somebody asks you something and you need time to, to think it through, say, I need to pause for a moment. I want my response to be valuable to you. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that we started off with pretty early in the conversation was the way to phrase it saying, if someone's pushing you for an impression or you're, what do you think about that, George? What do you think about that, Susan? And then you can say, I can give you two things. I can give you my initial impression and then as we keep talking about this for a few minutes, I think I'll probably adjust my initial impression as we go along. These have been a number of things that have been very useful to my clients. And I like to emphasize that when I work with my clients, I'm both spoken word strategist 
and executive coach. As I help my clients develop executive presence and to be ready for TED Talks and other speeches, what happens here is that the words, the strategy, and the rehearsal is what makes transformation possible mm -hmm. so that the introvert can present herself or himself at their best. Now, in closing, you can find us at getthebigyes.com. I'll share that again. Getthebigyes.com. And we'd like to say that... Remember... Introverts can show their best self with strategy. Take care. Thank you. Be well. Bye.